Stuffing because I've got a frog in my throat, not because of anything. Oh, we're on. Midweek preview time. Gosford is the venue, and Jesus, good. They've impressed us, haven't they? This would. Some of these horses that are going to win tomorrow, I reckon, might struggle to win a Katoomba maiden. <laughs> That's Glenn's track, of course. He's yes. got uh, copyright on that one. But yeah, anyway, we are uh, we we're we're, we're uh, dealt these cards, so we'll play them. Of course, uh, Canterbury. It's about Friday five night. winners, isn't it? So that's that's all that matters. Oh, it is. You any good at that? Oh well, yes, I'm reasonably solid at that. I hope so. We've got my living, Mark. Yeah. We've got a uh, true rail and a little bit of rain as we uh, as we're as we're filming, which is not a bad thing. Uh, so fair track is in the offing tomorrow, given that it's been so dry. What will the track be, but because um, a couple of the track my will be good. The track will be good. Uh, there is the threat of more rain around tomorrow. There's a low pressure cell that's um, mm. settling in on New South Wales, but uh, the track is so hard underneath that uh, it's inherently good. Okay. Race one looks uh, a great betting race for you, Gord. We've got loud enough favourite mm. at even money, $2. Uh, $3.20 the Maiden Crimson Halo, $6.50 Miss You Ma. $13 Pirate Jack, who won a picnic race at Gosford here last week on Melbourne Cup Day. And $15 My Ladybug. Um, and it wasn't just a picnic race, Gord, there were two runners. I just, I'm just amazed at some of the form I was doing on this program where a Wednesday metropolitan mm. race will have a picnic runner in it. It's not it's a metropolitan race, it's a provincial race. They're 30,000, it's a provincial card. The metros have gone running off to Friday night, thankfully. Okay. It's Wednesday, Mark. It's Wednesday, I know, and it's, mm. uh, it's, a, it's a, um, a big play day for most people, but mm. uh, plenty will be opting out tomorrow on account of the standard. Mm. Pirate Jack will be in the van. He had his blinkers recently. My Ladybug gets Glenn's favourite man, Hieronymus, to try and lead. Princess Marvi from the Cheers stable will be on speed. Miss you Ma takes a trail loud enough, hasn't had a run for a while, would like to race on speed and gains Cathy, which is uh, not a gain, is it? Well, it's an interesting change. I, I, I've not been very impressed with the way Bucky's been riding lately, so um, I'm definitely not giving it a negative, I'm just giving it a question mark. Yeah. Of course, Loud Enough and Crimson Halo went around in the Wyong race together. There was a big space between them. Since then, Crimson Halo has gone to the 1800 at Randwick on Melbourne Cup Day and run on from the back. Um, are they too close together, Good. I think Loud Enough has uh, found its distance now. Like, um, he was sort of impressive mm -hmm. the other day, the way he managed to pick himself up. From that box seat position, had to hook around here, although I realised the standard wasn't very high. The real problem is that he's had... 23 days off, which is 24 days off, which is yeah, not Yeah, I mean, look at what he's against. You know, yes. Like, yes. he clearly has to be on top, doesn't he, loud enough? Huh? Yes. Look, um, no argument from me. Anything mm. else to talk about? No. Uh, Miss Yuma will get a, a good passage from Penza. She is a still lightly raced mare. In fact, they're the three to concentrate on. The seven star, eight star, yeah, eight star. Yeah, yep, definitely. Um, and that pretty much rounds out the race. Let's move on to something a little more juicy. 1100 metre three year old maiden with a couple of gay bot horses. $2.60 Himalaya Flyer. $4 Banuelo from the blue colour yard. Uh, $4 Sabrarian. $9 Classic Wind. And that's pretty much your race. Uh, I had Banuelo probably going back from a wider gate. She's posied up from softer gates recently at Gosford. But the gay bot horses look to try and get forward. Good trials. Sabrarian, can he lead Himalaya Flyer or not? It wasn't so much about lead, it was about the fact that I'm just lining these two horses up because I thought they were only two horses in the race. And um, Sabrarian came out of the faster race, but when I'm looking for action and professionalism, I thought that number one Himalayan fly was. Um, far more professional even though it was out of a, a sort of a slower run race it also gets Ad, uh, um, Adam Hieronymus the other one's got Rachel King on but the the query there was that Hieronymus rode Himalaya Flyer in the trial and um, Rachel King rode Sabrarian in the trial as well so I'm I'm saying um, you know how normally you see the the, <coughs> the higher 
rate jockey of the particular stable get the best ride? Is that necessarily the case in this circumstance? I don't think it is. Well, but what I... about if they had a view to this race and that's why Hieronymus was on number one in the first place? No, oh, it's a chance. It's a chance. Yeah. Um, look, Sabrarian, I, I saw it, I watched it closely in his two runs last time in. He, he, he's looking for the 2400. It's only 1100. What, what about his action over the ground, too? It's like a draft or yeah, it's like a draft. It's a stayer. It's a stayer. So, number one, I think he's got a bit of an edge at this point. Uh, well, I haven't seen any two rack toffs. I mean, but I suppose I'm anticipating, you know, Ben Whale was the only sort of horse with any form in the race that is looks a bit limited. Yep. And is likely to be ridden conservatively, especially Jason Collett's riding. Uh, yeah, I, I did the replays on its last two races, uh, Benello and, um, how are you pronouncing it? Benuelo. Benuelo. Like, um, Benuelo. Uh, should get a little bit more uh, Mediterranean about my pronunciation. Perhaps no, Latin American maybe. Oh, okay. Well, Manuel was Spanish. Yeah. 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 Um, anyway, uh, I thought I was going to find it and then I did the tapes on it and I was pretty impressed with its last two runs, his preparation, so... I clearly had to find number one Himalayan flyer on top. It's a professional type. It's had the over 1,000 metre trail. It does have Adam Hieronymus, so I definitely have it as my number one selection and probably will be backing it. Numero uno. Yeah. Race three, 1,200 metre maiden. We've got, to, we've got to have maidens because it's the only way to get any fields, so we'll mm. get, uh, we just keep progressing in distance. $1.65 Deadly Shadow, $6 Samar. $8 Latitude, $13 Lewinsky, $16 Satirical Dame, isn't everyone sick of it? $21 Best of Pluck. Now, uh, Lewinsky is reasonably pacey, although it didn't lead it narrower, although it should be noted that that other horse in the finish with her did at least run some sort of race at Hawkesbury last week. Yep. Um, Deadly Shadow is now stabled at Gosford. Not a bad condition for Adam Duggan, but of course it was Team Hawks, this horse has been gelded, and Samar has been on speed in two Canterbury runs, so shouldn't be too far away there at all. Latitude went out the back in a field of four at a thousand metres last time, so it's not keeping up that quickly here. All right, what do you say? Poison odds? Well, I'm not sure whether it's poison odds, actually. Uh, number two, de Deadly shallow. Uh, Shadows. Shadow actually interests me. Um, if you notice before it's run last start um, at Wyong, it's trials were poor. This time, 1,000 metre trial, which I love, pushed out, did it in decent time over the four trials on that particular day. This was clearly the fastest trial. Where was he in the run? Because that's the only gossip trial I didn't look up to, uh, today. Jumped. And led. Yes. Yeah, no good. Yeah. trial was out six metres. Complete, not complete flattering of, and obviously the ran time mark. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just saying that if you get on the bunny with the rail at six metres at Gosford in a trial, you are, you know... Have a look at the contrasting situation between its trial's last preparations and its trial this preparation. With a different different trainer, different so di different setup. They're a little... It has to be the top selection in this race. Will I be backing it? Well, that's the question mark. The only other one I actually had a second look at was number seven, Lewinsky. Um, as we've mentioned previously on the show, if you notice somebody, some, a horse trialing pretty well and it goes and it flops first start, then maybe you can forgive it and back it second start. Um, as far as this horse is concerned, that is definitely the case. Um, but geez, it does come from Nara. Um, yeah, look, the four more Miller's business, I'm not buying. I, you know, I, I, I saw it, I saw it run well last week, but it's just, it was a filly at home over the shorter course. On the bunny, wasn't it, at home? Yeah. But uh, one little minor pearl of mine as well is that it had a 790 metre trial and an 800 metre trial. So is it ready first up? It didn't have the 1,000 metre trial. So maybe if we took into consideration that that now run over 1,100 metres was just like another trial, maybe it springboards off that and does something here. Um, Clearly, I have to have number two, Deadly Shadow, on top, but I probably won't be betting in the race. If Lewinsky gets to... What, what price did you say? $13. It won't be any longer than that. Yeah, so I, I'd take the, the early 13s, Lewinsky. 
Uh, my bet of the day here and it hasn't been mentioned. Number three, Seymour, who's shown pace in two starts in town, and most recently there was it was game on. It was four across the track there. It was working three wide um, outside the lead or just off the lead, and uh, back to the provincial second up. It's game on for me. That's race three. And what price is that, Mark? Six dollars. Mm, lovely. Okay. Race four is a race that we'd rather not talk about, I suspect. Yeah. It's uh, benchmark 65 over 1,200 metres. It's got that classic look of a provincial nuffy race. Where Strad, uh, I Am Impressed is $4.60, Stradance is $4.80. Feature is a feature price at $5. Vencedora, off a short break, is $6.50, $8 to Lisa, uh, who's first up without a trial, I think. Um, $13 Secret Web, $15 Tilbury Lodge, they're the Perry Resumers, and Long Lodge the bottom one. Is there anything you can suggest here? What price did you say number two was? $4.60. Um, you come back from Saturday Metropolitan Grade, you're always a chance. But then I prefer my Saturday Metropolitan run instead of coming back in grade to be horses that are in the vanguard. Yes. This course clearly isn't. Um, oh, but what do I make of it? Uh, I'm not sure. I, is it just gone? Oh, no. 58, 58 weeks off. Doesn't it just need a race? It came last. Yeah, it was a very slowly run race. And it pulled its head off. I think coming back to 1200 helps. Definitely raced ungenerously um, and was three wide. The, the three wide isn't a problem in a slowly run race. So no, I, no, no, that wasn't the problem. Uh, the problem was that it was just, it was lacking match practice and it was. Did you see Man of Choice just blow it away? Oh, I'm backing Man of Choice here. Um, I'm declaring Man of Choice. No, no, no. What no, are you no, doing? No, no. Uh, look, the speed is on here because Vencedora wants to lead, Stradance wants to lead, Feature is no hope if it doesn't lead. Tilbury Lodge is behind them, and you know I'm impressed. Gets a race shape that will fall apart for it because there's dodgy, bodgy horses here. I mean, Stradance is an honest, mm. very ordinary mare that can get away with it here, but she's and got, won, pres she's got it pressure. won in a picnic cup last start. Like. Ran very fast time, <laughs> Lord, <laughs> with the run at six at Gosford <laughs> on the bunny. <laughs> I, I didn't, I haven't seen the race. Yeah. I'm sure there's some people that have seen the race, mm -hmm. but I'm sure it was on the bunny. Do you have much more to say? Uh, look, this is how bad this particular race is. Like, feature has to be a chance. Right, no. It's I mean, last please. two runs, and there's nothing wrong with this last two runs. It led the other day against unfit horses. It's not going to lead Phoebe's here. Phoebe's last has since come out. Two starts back at race against Yeah, yeah it, 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 it didn't, couldn't keep up with Phoebe's last. Anyway, mm. look, the market says $5, so you're, they're concurring with you, Gord. Oh, well, I'm... I'm I definitely won't be backing it. I, the, the only one that mildly interests me was two, and the chance of me investing a dollar on it are um, as much yes. as as a, as much as the probability of a rocking horse shitting. So, uh, yeah. Right, I think we'll just rename that horse. I am unimpressed. Yeah. I can win the race. Yeah. Race five is uh, we're up to the mile here. We're in a maiden, and two dollars ninety host win vintage. Who's just had the two runs? A veteran of two runs. $3.80, the very impressive Perry Yard horse, C-Pay. $5, My Miss Padrill, another great line chaser. $7.50, Street Comic. $9, We're Smoking, off a sequence of country runs. $15, Sacred Peak, long odds the other three. And, again, we've got good competition here, although perhaps the low draws there. Uh, barriers, I've got barriers 1, 3, 4 and 5, all contesting here, early doors. My Miss Padrill was instructed to be ridden off the speed the other day, so that happens from gate one here. Um, host win Vintage may make a play for the lead. Sacred Peak will be there and Cipe will be on speed for his new rider, Ty England, replacing the Frenchman. Um, we're smoking off the speed and Street Comic looks fairly slow. He looks like he needs increase in distance already. Um, number one went all right in a fair maiden at I, that's that was my question to you. Look, line up that Hawkesbury race for me. Well, my Miss Padrill is your line. Mm -hmm. Every possible Hawkesbury. Yep. Um, and then gets beaten five at Gosford. But I wasn't that impressed with the way Hawkesbury um, Vintage actually. What it did at the end there too. It didn't look very impressive to me. But yeah, well, look, it was caught deep on the speed. 
but maybe you wanted to be there. It's um, it's, it's sort of last man standing here because. Oh look, they had they had to be the the form race. I mean, you saw that horse. Is it Go Benny or whatever? Yeah. Come out of that race and absolutely smashed them on. Um, it was on Very Saturday. Very clever ride, right, Robert Thompson. I suggested um. How am I supposed to say this legally about Go Benny's run in that race? Well, it was 15, 16, 15 up to 20, oh, 2020. No, no, no. How am I supposed to say what I thought about Go Benny's race well, he was without actually he was getting into trouble? Next start. Okay. He wasn't Did suited. He wasn't suited. He wasn't suited. Okay. Uh, he wasn't suited last start um, and then came out and smashed them. So that makes you think that maybe that might have been a decent form race, but I just couldn't get away from the fact that I thought it was a poor form race. And I went for outside, Mark. Yep, where are you going? Country form. Yeah, so have you seen this horse? Do you know this yes, horse? Yes, watched both its last starts. You know, like, there's no bad luck about it. It's just the fact that it's had, you know, in um, after a 174 day break, it's had a 1250, 1280, 1515, now 16, isn't it? Um, just looks like a good setup. And because I saw the race when I was reviewing Hawkesbury, it's Buckley to Penza, which. Um, I would have only given that a mild positive, but after watching uh, the Hawkesbury replays on the other chances in this race, I gave it a double positive for some reason. It'll be a very, track. very good, um, it's a very good contrast between what looks to be scuzzy provincial form yeah. versus, well, you know, it's, it's, it's obviously yeah. country, it's just country. And it, it's, it's just country. But it's scary, isn't it? Because you know Provincial is generally well, that much stronger. The trouble is that the yeah. three horses out of the Gosford race mm. at the last meeting, Street Comic, My Miss Padrill and Seapay, mm. well, two of them were on the fence and the rail was out. Mm. So they had some sort of advantage, Street Comic and Seapay. And My Miss Padrill, well, we saw her at Hawkesbury finish well astern of Hostwind Vintage at a good bit longer price. So, and, and T. Clark, that's the second ride for the day, um, off his... Five fiver on Saturday. Mm. He'll be popular, and maybe his popularity is enough not to bet. But I'm in his camp. Race six again at the mile, and three dollars Spanish stride the stayer second up. Three dollars forty broke girl. Five dollars fifty Jezu. Uh, Eight dollars ready and flying, and long odds the rest, including last start Tari non tab winner on Melbourne Cup day Orlando Jack. Same stable as Pirate Jack. Um, but at Jay Zoo I had hopping out into the lead. He um, he was on speed in not a bad race on Melbourne Cup Day at Musselbrook. Baroque Girl was ridden off the speed in a few races last preparation, but was hard on the speed last week at Kembla on Melbourne Cup Day, like outside lead, uh, and really should go forward. Orlando Jack is the other one, and ready and flying not too far away, but uh, not much happening here, Gordon. If you can, if you can promise to get me at least five thousand out of this tonight, I'll mention it on the show. Five thousand out of what? Well, are we going to get set tonight or not? No. <laughs> oh, no, on, no, 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 no. What you do is oh. you spruik, 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 spruik until it gets, it gets into such a short price that the layers start getting into action. <laughs> oh man! Better the day. What? Better of the day in this race, these bloody... I know, 1,600 metres, it's terrible, isn't it? Oh, I, I think I, the, I, I think the I, precipice I, of the no bet. I think I've been listening to you far too much as, as far as, um, you know, um, middle distance um, position in running last start, getting prepped and primed for its next kill. Okay, um, well, you, you know, want to go, Mark, or do you want it's, me it's, to go? It, you know, it, it, one at Gosford, albeit, a very, that was a really low form race, that race. Where Jay Collett, rider for tomorrow, went back and rode cleverly, improved his position mid-race. Uh, he's found a very winnable race here. You haven't even mentioned the name yet. I've well, scared you off, have I? <laughs> no, we, we don't mention the name. That's the, for the viewers to work yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, Jay yeah, Collett? Yeah, oh, what's yeah, he riding? Yeah. Oh, he's riding number two. Uh, look, Spanish Stride being posted as favourite. A horse with talent, but a horse that's uh, doing himself no favours here. He was first up in town in the right lane in a um, in a race on Melbourne Cup. It was a very disappointing run. Um, I, I thought I was going to find it because I'm very interested in that stable at the moment. Um, and then I saw number two and um, 
got a little you bit excited. You were bewitched, were you? Yeah, I was bewitched. I was bewitched, yeah. Third up, positive jockey change. And you notice last start when it got head and it just came again. Oh, man, it just like, kept fighting. Oh. It was a really... You know, here's a there's a run of a horse saying, I am, am ready, ready to win. Yes. Jezu, uh, honest horse, not much good, shitty record, but uh, did run into a youngster, yeah, a, a lightly raced horse of Paul Masara's at, at uh, Musselbrook last time, and um, can sort of lead. That's race six, the penultimate. We're back to the short course here, a thousand metres maiden. And three dollars thirty good time Charlie, four dollars sixty shall luck, five dollars never out, five dollars fifty Orient Tex, eight dollars fifty second step, eleven dollars daytime dance. Now Gord, I want you to do something for me here. Read out the owners of number seven. Mm, well it's gonna to be tough. Because for some reason or other my printer has Japanese over the top of there. <laughs> Oh, Mrs. K.M. War, A. Finch, R. Harris, Mars, Maxwell, Blewett, Mars, Lehman, and... Alan Jones. Belford Productions. <laughs> is there an Alan Jones there, is there? Well, manager Alan Jones, and, and it's Alan Belford Jones, as everyone knows. Oh, well, no, I didn't know that. Uh, so that's why it's called Belford Productions. So, let's just face it, there are a... Um, well, there's a couple of failed cricketers in there, isn't there? Well, that's why it's well, that, well, that, well, that's why it's so short in the market at the moment. I'd suggest because um, um, I didn't I didn't find it on top, did you, Mark? Or? No, but uh, well, you know, it, it was the Gosford Rail out I mentioned, but it did piss in in fast time. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Where are you going? You uh, don't like the cricketers. I'm horse. doing a, I'm doing a reverse pearl here. Um, I'm going to number eight, second step. Um, well, the uh, very, very deep and um, highly regarded John Steinmetz yard. When, you, when you're watching a trial, you, you watch, obviously, ping in the lids is very important. You watch its professionalism. That's important. Um, obviously, time is important, particularly if it's pushed out or not pushed out, and then you make adjust adjustments accordingly. Um, there was only one faster trial out of eight at Hawkesbury. Um, it was an away trial as well. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of positives about this horse as far as the way it looked to the eye when it was trialling, the time it did, um, and also the trialling away from home. The only negative I could find was the fact that it was only over 760 metres. And, you know, that's, that's a, a big pet, negative. That's a pet hate of mine, but it's not a pet hate when you're talking about that price range, is it? Oh, and it's also a thousand metres. It's not like it's day booming at 1200. Mm. But I mean, it's $8.50, isn't yeah, it? It's $8 yeah, it's $8.50. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's I, a very, very, very stylish trial. I have an inkling that it's the best horse in the race. Uh, the one that I, I watched everything it had done in every trial and every race start trying to find was number five, Good Time Charlie. And um, at the end of the day, I just couldn't do it. So um, I had to. Uh, this is a like the type of Joe Pride, Gosford. Comes out of the right form races, last preparation. It's, it's but out it, of Rich it, it got smashed, you know? Like, yeah, well, I could worked, see it worked, winning, worked but, hard yeah. and then went 1,000 to 1,200. It's mm. back to 1,000 here. Mm. It's, it's where I've landed. Um, look, I, I can see Shell Luck doing something. Orient Tex is, is well schooled, uh, three year old. Mm. Um, never out. Well, she's she's taken it to Randwick, Gosford, Gosford. So obviously she's keen. Yep. Um, but it was a bunny win at Gosford with the rail out six. Uh, there's my, a lot of angles there, isn't there? Well, it's not there, a bad race. Yeah. You know, there's, we've, we've spoken of, um, and and then there's daytime dancer who was a four year old mare, trained by John Thompson. Its trials weren't don't don't look particularly exciting, but mm -hmm. he's um he's a, a trainer that hides them well. Number five for me in the penultimate. We come to the... Oh, you actually... Good time, Charlie, on top. Wow. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. Can't. The nightcap. Whoa, beautiful. <laughs> Again, over the thousand, the biggest field of the day. Um, that's what we have to do. $4.20 in favourite, wide acclaim. $5.50, duty dude. $7.50, fly forward. $8, Anna time. $11, Exceed the Moon, $13, Copite, $15, 
Randiki and Princess Commander miss thirteen dollars down the bottom. Dwarf Star. Um, Keen Ray succeed the Moon would like to lead, but it's drawn drawn the widest and a thousand metres. That's not easy to do. You need Natural Will to crash across, yep. and he's not there. Uh, Anna Time is obviously in the van. Kamehameha doing his best underneath them. Duty Dude is fresh and uh, and revved. Uh, and they were the main speed horses I saw. Uh, Fly Forward looks to try and get a spot midfield. Wider claim shouldn't be too far away from his inside gate. Where you go? Um, well, it's an interesting race. Again, yeah, yeah, it? yeah, yeah, it's yeah. got a bit of gut. Yeah. It's got a bit of something to it. Um, I had to go for um, Fly Forward number six. Um, had the 1,050 metre trial, which I'm always looking for. Lightly raced, not too many convictions. Has collared on board, and if you notice the trial it was in was against superior horses than anything that's in this race. Um, uh, Mersault, Francesco, put them away quite nicely. The first one I looked at was actually Judy Dude, thinking I was actually going to find it, and then I saw how aggressively it was pushed out in its trial over 900 metres at Rose Hill last start, and I had to be against it, even though it actually has quite good first up stats and the first up has always been its best run I'd, I'd suggest so, yeah it's um, from that yard it needs a thousand but I mean it seems very yeah. kind of very uh, well found conservatively like, priced given yeah. that Princess Command whipped its ass That's last it, yeah. time it was a gospel yeah, yeah. And I, I'm, I'm saying uh, there's a little bit of suspicion here but also also a little bit of detail involved in the fact that I I think Fly Forward might be better horses than these so I'm interested in that um, and I don't know why I always find myself backing this horse, Mark, and a time. Like, well, I think she's have just, I had she's enough country, no. or she's not? Country. She's country. She did a bit of work the other day, but you see, well, I, see, I, see her I, I see, I see, I see Zoroya in the in the in the form of Zoroya, that thing of Diane Lumsden. Mm. But it, but all the races through the whole okay, day, well, you're, about, you're seeing little bits of icky on every horse you select. Oh, for sure. You know, you just, for sure, but like last two provincial runs, 9th and 9, 10th and 12th. Yeah. Um, you know, time to go to Cessnock for you, and a time. Copite for me. Um, she's a, um, a little local that uh, will step nicely here. I have actually marked fly forward favourite because I do like this horse. A thousand metres worries me, but um, in the sense that it's probably the best horse in the race, isn't it? Um, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 So that's. Uh, is there anything else to say? Why to claim? Well, look, he's he's prepped all right. He's uh, this is not a bad race for him. Um, now up to 18 starts for two wins, but has done a lot of racing in town. Um, Exceed the Moon is twice winner at this course and distance, but got away with got it's been getting away with stuff, or did get away with stuff last time, and um, you've got the. Clary resume as Princess Command, or she is your Mark. Mark Connors and Clary Dad, Dwarf Star, um, doing their best. Princess Command better suited at 1100, but. Um, Have I been too rough on Anna Time? Like, um, who? Well, I, I remember we, we both, I think, backed at the Canterbury, didn't we? Last preparation. No, oh, it was a long time ago. If we're backing a horse at Canterbury last preparation, then it's got to be two a solid ago, chance in this, in this race. Maybe, maybe, but I mean... Two years ago, 119 days, plus a... Who are you talking about? Start. No, no, you're, thinking, you're talking about Copite. the horse. Are you talk, who are you talking about? Copite or whatever it's The called. horse I tipped. Yeah. 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 Well, we both backed it at Canterbury, and not Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, she's, she's provincial only, but she resumes mm. in a provincial race. Yeah. And look at her trial. There she was, three deep, all the way on that six oh, metre I, island. Yeah, I, I think you've talked me into it, Mark. <laughs> That's the midweek preview. Unfortunately, we're at Gosford, but if you come away with something, you won't care. Exactly. Uh, nothing on Thursday, Gord. Friday night, Canterbury. We'll be on uh, on deck for a preview show for Girls Get Drunk Day at Rose Hill on Saturday, and that'll be on Friday morning. Oh, Glenn's so that, still be there. That'll be my first Girl Get Drunk Day. <laughs> What's going to happen? <laughs> Is somebody going to hit on me? <laughs> I could only be so lucky. Anyway. Yeah. Stay oh. Oh, special of the day is um, horse that shall not be named. Yes, and uh, mm. I'm tipping race three, number three. My word, no, race three, number three, three. says Ian. Same yeah. Beautiful. There you go.